everybody. It is Emmy. Welcome back to my third season of beekeeping. Today is May 11th, 2019. It is Mother's Day weekend, which around here in New England is the time for swarming. So it looks like swarming came a little bit early, about a week early. People here on my local beekeeping club have reported spotting swarms and catching swarms last week. And speaking of which, I suspect my big hive, which I was trying to prevent from swarming, may have swarmed. My last hive check was three days ago. When I went in there, I could not find my queen. I went through it twice. And I found a capped queen cell, which I moved over to a temporary nuke. And I tore down all signs of swarm cups and swarm cells. And I'm back three days later to see if I spot any eggs, because I did spot some eggs during the last inspection, but not spot the queen. So three days later, if there are no new eggs, I know that she definitely swarmed. But that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be going into my big hive, seeing if I see any eggs, seeing if I see my queen, seeing if I see any swarm cells. I've been tearing them down, incidentally, because I don't want them to swarm, number one. And number two, I don't want my apiary to be any bigger. So rather than doing a split, I just wanted to maintain three hives <laughs> because... I don't want to have that many hives, but in hindsight, I think I probably should have split them, and I think that's probably what I will do next year, is preemptively split them earlier, because I don't really like having to go into my hives every five days or seven days just to tear everything down. The bees weren't too happy the last couple times I've been in there. We've gotten a lot of rain. Today is the first sunny day we've had in about three days, and it's supposed to rain again tomorrow. So the bees were very cranky. I've had to really tape myself up. I've had to get suited up, which I really haven't had to do in the past. Uh, I don't really like that. So I think what I'll do next season is do preemptive splits. So this morning we went out to Connecticut and met up with Glenn over at Cedar Lane Apiaries. I really wanted to get my hands on a Saskatraz queen, but he didn't have any, but I did pick up a Carniolan reason why that is, if that big hive is queenless, which I suspect it is, I want to replace the queen so I can maintain the population and you know, honey production. If there is a queen, I will place my queen that I bought today in the temporary nuke that I made and destroy that queen cell, and I'll just have that as a resource nuke. Um, what else? Yeah, it was great to see Glenn. He has tons of advice. He's been keeping bees for 59 years. And he made a point of saying that he does splits early on, and then what he does is recombine them in fall, which I would love to do because, again, I don't want so many hives. So what he does is he takes his nukes and he combines them with his bigger hives, and he just lets the queens duke it out. He introduces them, and then the queens, the fittest queen, will win, and then you've got a jumbo hive coming going into winter, which I think is a great idea. So I'm looking for ways to reduce the number of times that I have to go into the hives. It's intrusive, it takes time, so doing preemptive splits I think is the way to go. But I don't know. This is just my third year after all. So, day before Mother's Day, I am spending the day to go through my big hive. I'm going to see if I can spot my queen or signs of her. If not, I'm going to reintroduce a queen that I just got. She's sitting in my pocket. Let me get her out for you. There she is. And she's tagged bright green because she's a 2019 queen, brand new queen, Carniolan. Now, if I need to introduce her into the big hive, I'm going to be using something called a push-in cage. So a couple of winters ago, Michael Palmer came to our local bee club and gave a little talk, and he mentioned the push-in cage as a way of introducing the queen to a hive, particularly if you've got a big hive that has got its eye on swarming or its mind of its own. It's a great way to convince the hive to accept her because what you're doing is allowing the queen with this cage to lay. So once she starts releasing those pheromones and she's laying, the other bees are more likely to accept her. So the acceptance rate is much higher, the cage prevents them from killing her, and she's got some food. And so I'm going to try that technique out today. I have a little cage, and yeah. So enough jibber-jabbering, let's go ahead and get into the hives. I checked on this hive, which is the backup nuke. Looks like there's a dead drone there. Bees are still alive, bees are still there. And here is my big one. Lots of activity. Let's get in there. All right. So they're already up in the super, I think. Make sure there's no queen up in here. All 
right, so we've got some nectar up here. So these girls are bringing in nectar. Nice. All right. Wait, is this one too? So I'm just checking on these two supers up here to see if there's any activity going on in terms of stores. There hasn't been a lot of great foraging days because we've had so much rain. So I'm just checking to see what's going on. There's some good nectar in there. This one's empty. This one's heavy. Lots of nectar in that one. Sorry, girls. Nope, they're cleaning off the mold. So, start to bring in some there. So, between those two surfboards, I probably have four frames of nectar. So, starting. These girls are not happy with me. All right, let's keep going in here. some privacy. Keep them calm. So now I'm going to go into here start looking for my queen if she's here. So I'm looking for signs of the queen or the queen herself. A little bit of smoke. Not too much here. These girls are not happy with me being around, which makes me feel like they might, again, be queenless. So that's why I'm all suited up today, because these girls have not been happy with me the last couple of hive checks. Nor have they been kind. Okay, that's an empty frame. Oh, it actually has nectar all in it. Great. That's a beautiful laying pattern. This queen was a Reba Grant queen. She was a Minnesota hygienic. Very good layer. And I did my best to keep her around. So no queen cells, swarm cells on that frame. I'm looking for eggs. Any eggs so far? Oh, wait, maybe I do see eggs. I do see eggs, so maybe my queen is in here. I'm seeing eggs in here, so maybe she didn't swarm. Great. So let's just keep looking. Yes, I see eggs. Okay. Let's keep looking. Yes, I see eggs. This whole section is covered with eggs. So, my queen is here somewhere. All right, I do see a queen cup. And I'm gonna destroy it. Lots of eggs, actually. Singly laying eggs. So she's here. Because I was in here three days ago. And this is all laid up. We have to look, there's a bunch of queen cups right there, too. We can destroy those. It's good to look in the corners as well. Well, now let's just gotta find our queen. So if I find my queen, I'm actually gonna separate her and split her. Okay, another queen cup. I'm not using much smoke today because I don't wanna drive her down too far. A couple more queen cups right there. Those. 
So we see here several queen cups right there, right there, and we see a developing peanut right here. Right there. That's a three day old queen cell with a larva and a royal jelly in there. So I'm going to take all those down. Okay, I just got to find my queen. So, one, two, three queen cups. Queen cell destroyed. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Lots of swarm cups. Nine, ten. So pinch those all down. I found my queen. I found the blue queen. Right there. There she is. She has not swarmed. Awesome. girls want to swarm. Check this out. Look at this little cluster right there. Look at that. See that right there? These are all swarm cells. I was just in here three days ago. That's what happens in three days. Get rid of all those. Get rid of that. And down here, we have more. But I did find my queen, so she has not swarmed yet. There's another one. So, my plan is to give these a new queen and take out the old queen. Alrighty, so this is exciting. It's May 11, 2019. I just went into my big hive and I found evidence of my queen. I saw lots of eggs. So I went in there three days, so I know that she was still in there, and I was searching and searching, and I finally found her. I'm so happy, because that means they did not swarm. My original queen is still in there, although the bees are very testy. So now what I'm going to do is replace the queen and take the old queen out and do a split. As you can see, there are bees hovering here. They're very pissed off. So I'm going to use a push-in cave to introduce my new carniolan queen. So. I pulled out a frame here, and this has capped brood, and it has some nectar in it. So what I'm gonna do is take this push-in cage, and I'm gonna place it right here. This is hardware cloth, I believe it's number eight hardware cloth, so the bees cannot get in there and kill the new queen. Now it's important to get a little bit of nectar or some kind of honey stores so the queen has some food, and when these worker bees emerge, they will be loyal to her, and they will help her out. So there's also some open cells here which allow her to lay and release her pheromones which will increase the hive's acceptance of their new queen. So I think I'm going to use this section right over here because there's a good amount of nectar, there's some new nurse bees and there's space for laying. So I think I'm going to use this spot right that will give her plenty of space and we want to make sure we don't trap any worker bees under there because they are not loyal to this new queen and they might kill her so so the reason why I'm using this pushing cave is to increase acceptance this is an established big hive and they are loyal to their queen so I'm gonna do an initial kind of push in here and then here's my new queen I really wanted to get a Saskatraz, but I didn't have any, so Corneolian it is. Put her here, and the trick is to get her out in here without getting any new bees in there. So, or not new bees, 
any of the worker bees in there. So let's see how we can do that. I've removed the, oh, the mesh. Oh, got her in there. Okay, there she is, perfect. Okay, there she is. Now I wanna push this cage down really securely so that the bees can't crawl underneath. Okay. So there is the new queen, right there. So I'll come back in three days. I'll come back on Tuesday and see if she's laying and if they've accepted her. Alrighty, let's go pop her into the hive. So basically what we're doing is we're disrupting this hive so they won't swarm. Haven't yet. This is our old queen. We're gonna put her in the split. Shake those friends off. Now they're really pissed. And we're gonna place our new queen right in here. These girls are angry. At least it's a beautiful day, right ladies? So I will come back in on Tuesday and release her to make sure that she's been accepted. Good, she's crawling right in there. She's right there. And we're gonna introduce her. There you go, ladies. Your new queen. Right in the middle of the brood nest. Okay. Push this in. Now we have to make sure we've destroyed every single swarm cell, which I believe I have. Okay. So, this has become basically a super. I'm going to bring up some more syrup here. into the split that I made three days ago with that queen cell. I'm going to rip that queen cell out and give them a rip. So I did give them some food, about a quart of sugar water. Looks like they drink it all. Just to kind of encourage them to stay. I'm also going to boost them with some brood and more nurse meats. are much easier to deal with. So there's plenty of room for her to lay. I'm gonna go through this and make sure there's no queen cups in here. 
pollen, pollen, and syrup nectar. Good. So, I'm gonna boost them with some nurse bees and a frame of capped brood. Do another check here and make sure there's no, oh, look right here. We've got some hiding queen cups here. They're empty, but squish them anyways. has some capped brood, has some nectar stores. Again, I'm just searching for any queen cups. Don't see any. Some space in there for her to lay as well. I'm gonna put all the brood together so they can keep them warm. We're expecting some more rain. So today is really the only day to be doing this. All right, now these girls are a little pity -oed. Now let me get my queen. Here is the original queen from that hive. She did not swarm, which I'm so happy to hear about. My attempts in keeping them from swarming were not in vain. And uh, we're just gonna release the little queenie here, the blue queen. So we push the bees off. There's blue queen right there, crawl on in. Shake those bees off. Let's close these bees up. So, I have a bunch of pissed off bees, but my big mother hive, or my big number three hive, which I've been so concerned about in terms of swarming, actually did not swarm. I found evidence of her laying, and I actually found her, which is great. So, I did a split. I just introduced her to the split that I created three days ago, got rid of the swarm cell, placed the old queen in there, introduced a new queen to the big queen hive, and hopefully that will thwart them from swarming. I'm gonna go into my other two hives a little bit later. I am so happy that I found my blue queen. She was a great layer and good genetics, and I hope she sticks around, and I hope the introduction of the new green carniolan in that hive is a good one. I'll be back on Tuesday, which is four days from now, to see if they've accepted her. Okay, never a dull moment in beekeeping. It's Emmy. It is May 11th, 2019. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye!